Hi Precalc, I decided to make you a quick work, a little video about the worksheet that you did, the review worksheet. You already have the answers, so I'm not going to give you the answers, but I did want to give you a little bit of work shown for each one to just kind of remind you of how to do these things. Numbers 1 through 8 all here ask you to write the vector in component form. So that's like this, or here it is, like this and a, as a linear combination. The full way of saying that is as a linear combination of unit vectors i, j, and k. So that just really means in i, j, k form. So this is what that's talking about. Okay, so as a linear combination means this. This is a linear combination already, so we didn't have to do it, the original problem here. Number six is a linear combination already, we don't have to change that. Then find the magnitude. Remember the magnitude is where you do basically Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I think we're pretty good on that. Let's look at 9 and 10 are just like that. Look at 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, right in there. The question I've been getting on these, 11, 12, 13, 14 is, what do they mean by find the resultant vector? They just mean find the result. It's just a vectorish way of saying, what do you get when you do this? What vector do you end up with? So the resulting vector. So we only used that term prior to this worksheet. You only saw that when we were doing the airplane problems. So don't worry about that. It's, it's not a term that's just from airplane problems is what I'm trying to say. I'm saying we used it there. We said here's where the resultant vector is going to be. But resultant vector could be any result of doing things to vectors that gives you another vector. So this is what they're saying. Find this. It's just the same way we would do it with matrices. So this is a scalar multiple 9 times vector f minus 6 times vector v. So that's what you're doing. Don't get, let the word resultant mess you up. 15 and 16. As I said in one class today, if you don't know how to find a unit vector now, we're in trouble. Okay? You should know how to find a unit vector in the direction of a vector. And that's where you take that vector and you find its magnitude and you divide the whole vector by the magnitude. So here we would have 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 7 squared. That's uh, 62. So I'm going to take everything here and put it over square root of 62. But I can't leave it that way because I have irrational denominators. I have to rationalize my denominators. So I'm going to multiply on top and bottom each fraction by square root of 62. And that gives me 3 root 62 over 62. The next one is 2 root 62 over 62, but that simplifies. 2 and 62, it's going to be 1 root 62 over 31. This comes from this. And negative 7 root 62 over 62. So this is a unit vector that is in the same direction as this vector. They have the same, like if I found um, the angle between them and the x-axis, for instance, and the angle between them and the, the y-axis, it goes in the same direction. Okay? So the difference is a unit vector has a magnitude of what? It has a magnitude of one unit. That's why it's called a unit vector. Okay, so if I have a unit vector and then you say, okay, find a vector that goes in the direction of whatever that has a magnitude of four. Well, this goes in the same direction as that, and this has a magnitude of one. So if I multiply the whole thing by four, then I'll have a unit, excuse me, if I multiply this whole unit vector by four, I would have a vector that goes in this direction, which is this direction, but has a magnitude of four. Okay, so again, to find the unit vector, you just divide by the magnitude and then simplify. To find a unit vector that um, has a certain magnitude, first you find the unit vector, then you multiply by that magnitude. Next, it's not 39. Um, you might have to skip there if I can't find the other page. Let's see. Nope, here we go. 17. 17. 18, 19, 20. This is all stuff that you were doing on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So all of that's the same stuff I just talked about. 
find the dot product. Remember, dot product is where you take it, and it's like multiplying matrices where this would be a row and this would be a column. You do this component, the x component here, times the x component here, plus, and it's always plus, y component times y component, plus z component times z component. So negative, thir excuse me, negative 18 plus 0 plus 12 is negative 6. So there's your dot product. On the back here, this is the number one thing. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, it's coming up. This is something that is important to look at, okay? Remember that there are different ways to find out parallel, or orthogonal, or neither. Really, you're not ever finding out neither. You're, you're determining whether or not they're parallel or orthogonal, and if it's a no, that's a neither. Okay, if they're both no's, in other words, if it's not this and it's not this, you say neither. You need to be able to do these both ways. For parallel, here's what that means. One way is finding the angle between the vectors and going, okay, if that's zero, which in this case it is, then it's parallel, because for parallel, it would have to be zero or 180. The other way you can show that two vectors are parallel is by saying that one of them times a number gives you the other one. In, the, in other words, one of your vectors is a scalar multiple of the other. You'd have to figure out what you have to multiply to convince me of that, but you can say v is a multi scalar multiple three times u and to convince me they're parallel. The reason you need to be able to do both is you need to be able to do, this is easier, you need to be able to do this if you're asked to do it by finding the angles, which you were asked to do it on your quiz by finding the angles. So if it says anything about finding the angles, you have to do this. Orthogonal, you would get 90 for the angle. Now orthogonal, if you did it without finding the angle, you just multiply these two and you should get what? Or excuse me, not just multiply, just the dot product, that type of multiplication, so to speak. The dot product would give you zero. So if two vectors have a dot product of zero, that means they're orthogonal. Orthogonal, remember, is just the three-dimensional term that basically means perpendicular. Okay, on numbers 29 and 30. I know that I did this in class, so I'm going to see if I can locate the page where I did it. Um, oh, wow. Possibly not. And I really don't want to have to do, redo all that work. But basically, you are finding the vector that goes from one of your points to another point. So find a vector that goes between two of your points. Then find a different vector that goes between two of your points. Okay, so let's call this point Let's look at this, point A, point B, point C. I could find the vector that goes from A to B, and I could find the vector that goes from B to C. In this case, this was number 29 we did in class. So I found the vector that got me from A to B. Five minus three will get me to two. So that's all I'm doing to figure out how to get that vector. And then two plus zero gives me two. So I found U, and that's the vector from A to B, and I found V is the vector from B to C. Now the key is, for these points to be on the same line, these vectors have to be parallel. If there's a different angle other than going in the same direction, if it's A to B goes in one direction, and instead of going in the same direction, if B to C gets it all funky and starts going in a different direction, then A, B, and C can't be on the same line. If there's an angle here that's not 180, so if they're parallel, that's the only way they're all in a straight line, or all in a line, right? So you can find the angle and look and see if it's 0 or 180, because 0 or 180 is what gives you parallel vectors, okay? You could also point out here that u and v are not parallel because u is not a scalar, scalar multiple of v. To figure that out, Pick one, either the x's or the y's or the z's. Figure out what you would have to multiply. So for the z's, one times six equals this, okay? So I can multiply this z by six and get this z. Does that work for this? Four times six equals negative two? No. Does it work for this? Negative three times six equals zero? No. So no, one of my vectors is not a scalar multiple of the other. All right, next. The measure of the angle between the two vectors, that's just using this formula. 
So on 31 and 32, you're just using this formula. You end up doing an inverse cosine of all of this mess. Okay, moving right along, 33, 34, same thing. Cross product. Cross product is one where I take I, J, K, and then put these things in here. This is cross product, is finding the determinant, excuse me, of this made up matrix. And I made it up from row one is IJK, row two is, U, is vector v, U, and row three is vector V. Remember that there's always a minus second. And then this is 8200 zero, zero, and 8 negative 7, zero, 02. Okay, so moving on, you will get a vector. Okay, so you'll get, you know, 3i minus 2j plus 5k or whatever. And you could write that in that form or in component form if you're not asked specifically. But this is cross product. Okay, now, when we first studied this, remember, it would ask you to find the cross product. And let me just go ahead and do that. Let's see. It's negative 4i. And I'm doing it fast. Please don't hate on me if I'm wrong. That's uh, nose j's and 16k's. So this is negative 4, 0, 16, I believe. Key's not in front of me. Let's suppose that it is, though. You have the key, so you can check. This vector is orthogonal to u, and this vector is orthogonal to v. The cross product of two vectors is always orthogonal to both of the vectors. And remember, we were proving that by doing dot product of this with u, getting, showing that it makes 0. Dot product of this with v, showing that it makes 0. So here's where we get to number 39. In class, in third period, I misread something. I jumped over something here. I read this as if it said, find a vector that is perpendicular to the given vectors. And I know that the cross product of u and v is perpendicular or orth orthogonal to both of those vectors. So I said, just find the cross product. Here's the problem. It doesn't just say find a vector. It says find a unit vector. So the vector that we found in third period when we did this problem was indeed orthogonal to both u and v, and that's the good news. The bad news is we stopped there. We stopped right here. We found the cross product of u and v and said, here's the cross product. It's orthogonal to both of them, so I'm done. But it didn't say find a vector that's orthogonal to both. It said find a unit vector. This is not a unit vector. Its magnitude is 2 squared plus 7 squared plus 1 squared. That's going to be what? Square root of 54? That's not 1. This is not a unit vector. So after you've done that, if it says find a unit vector that's orthogonal, you find your cross product and then find the unit vector in that direction, which means I'm going on to find the magnitude and then divide the vector. This is finding the magnitude. And then I take my vector and put that over the magnitude each time here, and then simplify. And if you want to see a little bit more how I simplified there, I multiply by square root of 6 over square root of 6. This is the, the first term, working out the first term simplifying here. All this part right in the middle is me simplifying the x term here. Okay, the, z, the y term and the z term are a little bit less work intensive. But don't forget, if it does say find a unit vector that goes in this direction, and the direction being that it's orthogonal to both u and v, that you do have to, after you find that cross product, product that's orthogonal, find the unit vector in that direction. OK, here's number 41. There's a triple scalar product. That's pretty straightforward. 43 and 44, remember, you're doing the exact same thing, the triple scalar product. It's just that volume cannot be negative. So basically, you're taking the absolute value of the triple scalar product. So you find the triple scalar product, and if it's negative, you say, OK, I need to make this positive because we're talking about volume, which needs to be positive. What else? Cross product of the given vector. So we're, all, we're done. All right, then. Enjoy.